Oh. You seemed to, like, you really loved it, didn't you? It was wonderful. So, so good. And I have watched Mary Poppins since now because it was just like, ah, I really need to see this now. Because, I mean, in the story, you just he- see so much of the background of P.L. Travers as well. And it just builds so much into the Mary Poppins story as well. Mm. And uh, I think it was quite emotional, quite, it was really, really well told. Um and really great acting from Emma Thompson as well. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of excited to see what would happen with that come the Oscars and things like that. So, Yeah. It, yeah. it seems to be any movie that uh, also Tom Hanks is in seems to be instant gold these days because we had uh, Captain Phelps, was it? Which was amazing yeah. too. That was out a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Everybody lapped that up. It's great. You know, like Tom Hanks, he's, he just it seems to be, see if you want a movie that's you're really going to grow a pair of legs cast Tom Hanks in it but the thing with Tom Hanks is he's a storyteller he likes to tell the story he's not so much about all the effects and all the blah 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 he's kind of all the what sorry blah 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 that's a technical Uh, term I've I've heard it before it means Schindlodnam exactly yeah I thought so see I knew you and I were on the same level here Ruth Um, come on play it down (laughs) (laughs) Um, but on there Tom is just one of those people who's really passionate about the story and getting to the realness and the, the humanity in the middle of it as well and I think that's what's quite endearing about Tom's movies. The guy's got a great voice as well. Oh, yeah. He definitely has a voice for reading stories. You know, you can see him even in a couple of years' time, you know, as an old granddad sitting at the bedside of his, his young grandson reading a storybook, you know. He'd be like the next Morgan Freeman doing voiceovers and stuff. You, you know, know, I genuinely think that, yeah. yeah. He'll start, like, growing a freckle every time he does a voiceover yeah. or <laughs> so, explains a scene in a movie. So where I see him, that that's it, where you've described him there. It's sort of like the male version of Winona Ryder's character in Edward Scissor hands you know when she's the old woman reading the story yeah. to her granddaughter yeah. in the bed <laughs> now i've i've got visions of a, a big and a um a, a burbs age tom hanks like dancing around like as johnny depp cuts <laughs> <laughs> cuts a statue out of a block of ice <laughs> Anyway. But yeah, saving uh, Mr. Banks was really yes. good. Moving Very on stir- from my... Yeah, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I nearly cried a couple of times in the film. I can wow. understand that. Yeah. You can get blood from a stone. Yeah. Yep. How about that? Anyway, moving swiftly along to number three and a movie that, boy, I want to talk about. Uh, number three, it's another new entry, our final one of the week, Free Birds. Good yeah, this- God. <laughs> Describe yeah, this to me, Stuart. Yeah, it seems to be the year of the preposterous animated <laughs> films. You've got Turbo, which has got the race and snails. You've got Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, which is about food animals. And in this one, Free Birds, it's about time traveling turkeys who go back to the first Thanksgiving to change uh, to take turkeys off the menu. Ruth, we're not making this up. Have you seen oh, this? No, I've seen the trailer. I haven't seen the movie. I saw the trailer to see what the flip is this about. But yeah, crazy. I know. No, I wasn't. It didn't appeal to me at all. I, I genuinely thought somebody had slipped a type of narcotic into my drink at really? the cinema whenever I first saw the trailer. I was like, like whoa, I'm tripping. What? <laughs> Stuart, explain this to us. Go on. Have, have it, you seen it? Or did I yes, I, I, I have actually seen it. I um, I reviewed and I suffered through it. I think I've been given the, the brunt end of things when it comes to animated films because the only animated film, I, apart from Cloudy with a Chance, that I love this year is Despicable Me too because mm. I love the Minions. But... Um, this is just ridiculous. It is really ridiculous. It's boring. It has that thing where they think that they can repeat a joke over and over again, and it still remains funny. And it doesn't. Nothing in this film actually works at all. Even Turbo is better than this. Wow, and that's saying something. Yeah, because Turbo was just distinctly average. Um, it, yeah, it didn't have the, the characters that pop, but it was it, there wasn't anything overly fully wrong with it. It was decent animation, and it flowed okay. This just didn't seem to have any decent flow to it. The the voiceover was a bit lackluster. The jokes didn't... They fell flat completely. It's a ridiculous premise with time-travelling turkeys who break into <laughs> a secret bunker in, in somewhere in America, in the Pentagon or something. And it's they're like able to do I that. I would dream up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe you did, and you announced it on Roof Hollow and the Nerd, and then someone was like, oh, I'll make that movie. Ah, oh, you see, that's what's happened. Yeah. Yeah, the, they even got George Takir to do the voice of the of the time machine. I was going to ask you who are some of the voices, but George, oh my goodness, wow. Yeah, they, they give the time machine the name of Steve. 
Okay, seriously, this is something that I've come up with. I'm pretty sure I'm dreaming right now. <laughs> <laughs> a time machine called Steve, voiced by George Takai, in a movie about time traveling turkeys. <laughs> That's the best anti-drugs promo I can I can actually yeah. think of. You know, because instead of like showing to young kids and going like, don't take drugs, drugs are bad. You know, show them this and go, this is what happens. You, you don't need them, <laughs> just watch this. And go on an insane trip. That, I suppose so. <laughs> so how many marks out of 10 are you giving it, Stuart? Uh, do I have to? <laughs> yeah, go on then. Well, I don't like I think zero I, strong enough. <laughs> no, I, I think I, because I've been numbering there beside every single film that I've seen this year, and I've seen some like 304 films this year so far. Um, so I think I give this a four because it was feeling generous. Out of ten? Yes. Wow. <laughs> it wouldn't have been out of five. And I was thinking, what? <laughs> at, at least, is the animation in any way good? It's okay. That's probably the strongest thing about it. It's okay. Is it There's DreamWorks nothing... or what? Or who yeah. is it? Yeah. DreamWorks? It's it's the guy who did Horton He is a Who. Oh, mm. I didn't really so that, see it. I saw it. It was just okay. I mean, out of the kind of Doctor Zeus movies, it's the weakest, but mm. it was okay. Fair news. Right, moving on. <laughs> I'm just laughing because I thought you said Fair Who's there instead of Fair Do's, but anyway, you know Who's Doctor Zeus Whoville. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> At number two, it's Gravity. Yeah, again, you know what I thought about this film. Me and uh, Mark seems to be slightly divided. I adore this movie just because it is one of those spectacle um, events, that special kind of thing that when you go to the cinema, um, a rare film like this turns up. It it shows you what can be done with film. I think the last time um, that was done was Avatar. And then Avatar is actually a spectacular mess. It looks nice, but the film itself is a bit pants. And I'm hoping that's not the same with Gravity that everybody's caught up in the spectacle of the film itself, yet when you see it for a second or third time, you think to yourself, no, if you take away all the really nice special effects and the brilliant 3D, you've just got a very empty, vapid film. And I'm hoping that's not the case with it. Well, I mean, people I've been talking to who've seen it, I've not seen it yet. I went to try and see it at the weekend, but... It was 3D and 3D gives me a headache. Anyway, well, you so, have to see it in 3D though. That's that's the that's the whole idea I behind know, it. I, I can't. I really couldn't. I yeah. I would have to leave after about ten minutes. But anyway, I haven't seen it yet. But anyone I've spoke to who has seen it has said um, that the actual story itself gripped them more. Um, the kind of getting with the emotion of her character and feeling mm. what she was feeling at that time of being isolated, alone, stranded, see, all of that. What I've heard is that because I even I still haven't seen it yet. I'm actually. I, I I kind of I'm a bit antsy about going to see it because it's obviously it's been talked up so much. Stuart, obviously, you love the movie. Uh, yeah. Mark has been banging on about it for ages, and eventually he went to see it, and it was a bit of a letdown for him because obviously everyone was going, "Oh, this is amazing! You got to see it! You got to see it!" But from what I've seen from it, it just seems to be Sandra Bullock gets into a bit of a, an issue, she resolves it. She gets into another issue, she resolves it. And so on and so on. And what what you're really looking at isn't the actual story itself. What you're looking at are the visuals, are the three D effects, mm-hmm. which, like as Stuart was saying, the last movie that was shot specifically for three D in this way was uh, was Avatar. And I remember watching Avatar, and I was just absolutely blown away by it. You know, I just thought, you know, the graphics were great. The 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 depth of the 3D was just gorgeous. I mean, there's a scene in Avatar where they're coming out of cryo sleep and it just, you have all these guys just kind of floating around in the background and it's gorgeous, but to the point where it actually gave me a cluster migraine because it was just such a trippy visual. Um, and then obviously you watch Avatar again and it's it's just a very generic, boring action movie. Um, so I'd love to go and see Gravity just just to witness what it's like to be in space, because they do the whole Firefly thing of, the you know, because space is a vacuum, there's no sound. Um, so obviously you would just have nothing as you're watching these visuals. So it would be pretty much the closest you can get to being in space. Would you agree, Stuart? I would agree with that. I've sort of started to reevaluate my thoughts on it. I, I think I got slightly carried away, caught up in the moment, the spectacle. Um, mm. I fell for it, unfortunately. Um, looking at it, It might not be my film of the decade. That was slightly going over the top. It is a very strong contender for my film of the year. uh, When I finish off my lists um, for the end of the year, stuff that me and Andy is going to be doing. But um, 
I can definitely, I'm sort of, I want to see it in 2D because I saw it in 3D. And I'm thinking maybe seeing it in 2D might give me the, the might make me think, yeah, there is a problem with this film. Yeah, because at the end of the day, movies are there to entertain. You know, they're they're, not, they're an art format. They're there to entertain people. And fair enough, if Gravity has a weak plot, that's okay. As long as you're entertained with the visuals, surely that, in some semblance, makes it a good movie. Yeah, that, but the thing with the 3D in this film itself, because it's so handled such a... Uh... Uh, brilliant by Alfonso Cuaron um, when you've got the scenes where you see the Hubble telescope exploding um, mm. you feel like the thing is the stuff is flying at you and it's actually handled really well whether you might get that same feeling when you go to see it in the cinema I'm not sure in 2D I'm not sure because you've got things like the Aurora Borealis and the shots from space and the way you see the shuttles move and things like that um, the 3D add, does actually add depth to it in this case you might lose that, and so you might lose the impact of the film. Dead on, fair enough. Well, definitely one to check out, uh, yeah. if anything, in 3D in the cinema. If you can. If you, if you can. If you can't and it gives you headaches, don't do yes. it. Yes, <laughs> if your eyeballs can handle it, watch Sandra Bullock in, and George Clooney I'm not that fast 3D. about George, don't worry. Pass You're not? No. Old salt and pepperhead. I've never really been keen on him. Oh, uh, fair enough. What about Sandra Bullock? Oh, yeah. Oh, you would. <laughs> Ruth, you are filth tonight. <laughs> anyway, moving on. At number one, it's The Hunger Games Catching Fire. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of these people who th- thought it was more of the same. But that's yeah. not a bad thing when it comes to The Hunger Games, though, because I did really like the first Hunger Games film, and I rewatched it again after I saw Catching Fire. And I still think it is a quite strong movie, and you do see the evolution of uh, Jennifer Lawrence's character Katniss. I think she's she's one of the strongest female role models in films for the last few years easily. She's uh, That's the whole good thing about the Hunger Games films because people thought that the Hunger Games films were going to sort of like fill the void of the Twilight series, and that's not the case because if you look at the Twilight series, it's full of whiny, whiny people, and you just wonder, uh, if you think I whine a lot, they whine even more than me. <laughs> and whereas... The Hunger Games is sort of like the alternate version of that, the the version where it shows a strong female character and the male roles in the film itself are more of the whiny ones. Josh Hutchinson's character especially mm. is just like really, really mopey and you just want to slap him across the face with a fish because you just want to tell like him to shut up. Yeah. yeah, and just grow a pair and actually show what you can do rather than mop a lot. Um, personally... I think Elizabeth Banks is the strongest out of them all. That's what I said. The evolution of a character of Effie in the first one, she was sort of like more like a puppet. She had to do exactly what was told of her. Whereas in this one, she saw that the revolution, which was building force in the first one and um, to the forefront in the second one, in this one, she saw that there is the dark side of what she was living at. What she was living is a ruse. She was part of this spectacle. She was part of this TV. She was, it was, it is more like the Truman Show in this case, in the second one. And she could see that what she was doing was wrong and that she sort of like believed everything that Katniss was, Katniss was doing and seeing. Whereas it was just the male characters are the weakest thing about this. And I think the Hunger Games side of it, the, the quarter quell, is a bit is a bit lackluster as well, but it's still a really good film. Fair enough. So, would you recommend it? Obviously, then for people who have read the book, let's say, have you read the book? I haven't read the book, no. But I would I would easily recommend this. It is a tiny bit too long. It definitely felt its running time of one hundred and forty six minutes, but it's still a very well um, well thought out film. And if you want to see a film with strong female characters, it's definitely this one. Fair enough. Right, well, that was the top ten for this week. Stuart, do you have any uh, reviews for us? Nope, um, because all all the films that are out on Friday, um, all the films that are out this week are out on Friday, and normally we get films that are released on the Thursday or Wednesday because I can't go to press screenings because Sunderland, where I live, don't have them. I don't think they're actually give press screenings to us because I think they're scared of the North East. And uh, what do we expect come Friday then? Um, Frozen, which is Disney's latest animated film, which is getting a lot of praise at the moment. You've probably, I, yeah, if, I've heard it's pretty much Tangled, but with yeah. the Ice Queen. Yeah, so I was going to say, I don't even know what the storyline is about at all, but Tangled? Yeah, pretty much Tangled, because it is from the guy who did Tangled. 
Mm. So it is pretty much tangled, but in a sort of like icy there theme. So it's been doing really well with critics. Um, if you've been to the cinema in the last month, month and a half, you'll have seen the trailer for it anyway. So with the snowman and.